Hey guys, welcome to the ITS Knot of the Week in HD. To pick up where we left off last week, we had talked about the frost knot and its variations. So today what we're going to do is take that a step further and revisit tying the frost knot as well as show you how to tie an etrier. So in French, this, is me, this means stirrup. And as you can see, utilizing the frost knot here as well as this method to create these stirrups or steps, uh, you can create your own ladder out of one inch tubular webbing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's take a look at all the steps involved on how to do that. Okay, so the first step in tying an etrier is to source a piece of tubular webbing. This is one inch tubular webbing. And what we've got here is about a 20 foot section or length of tubular webbing. And then the next thing you're going to do is find the midpoint. So once you find the midpoint of your tubular webbing, you're going to grasp your ends of the tubular webbing. And again, this is a rehash of the frost knot. So if you haven't seen the frost knot yet, um, definitely make sure you check that out as well. So I'll be moving through this part a little fast. So again, frost knot, what we're going to do is leave a little gap for a carabiner or two. So as I tie this here, I'm going to get a little more length. So again, leave a gap for a carabiner. Route the overhand here for the frost knot. Something you want to make sure of as you're tying this is that you get this piece of webbing inside of the, the frost knot and you can visibly see that at the top. So even though you're leaving some length for the carabiner, just make sure that's, that's still all the way through. And I'm just going back and tightening this up, which is important. So then, as you can see, we've got the frost knot tied and space to route a carabiner through. So once you have the first frost knot installed, you're going to start pulling the steps for the etrier. So in order to do that, you want about a 12 inch length on this section that will remain the vertical of the step. So what I mean by that, we've got our yard stick here. So this length will remain about 12 inches. So that's where we'll want our vertical to be. And then we'll be pulling this out for the step, which that can be roughly six inches or so for the step. I'm actually going to make that probably about eight inches or so of the horizontal for the step here. So what you're going to do is once you've got your step pulled, you're going to go ahead and create an overhand knot. And let me do this with this way so we can tie in the other part. I'm just going to double check myself here. Come down to your midway point, pass that through, and you'll want to clean this up along the way to make sure there's no twists in it. And there's our first knot. So you can see that that pulls the step, just like so. We've got about a 12 inch vertical. If I were to look at this horizontally here, probably about eight inches in horizontal. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull the next step. And as you become more familiar with this, there's no real reason to use a, a measurement here, but you can just kind of estimate what about eight inches is for the step. And again, tie another overhand. So what's important at this point is you've got your one step here, then the section, I'll just go ahead and drop that to make it easier to see. The next section here, we're going to pull opposite. So if this was the vertical, I'm going to pull the step on this opposite side here. So as you can see, our first step is pulled to the right there. Next step is pulled to the left if we were going around along that vertical axis. 12 inches, 
at about eight inches. Make sure everything's straight. Tie that step in. Okay, so before I go any further, let's talk about how to reinforce these steps now that we have two of them. So what I like to do is tie paracord, as you can see from my example here. What I've done is actually whipped paracord on each one of these steps. Um, to keep it more rigid. So this will actually let the step become, it won't let it collapse so that you can find it easier when you, when you go to place your foot in there. So again, creating this field expedient ladder, it's important to not only have the step, um, but to be able to get, you know, basically find the step when you need it. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a channel like this in the actual step. Again, you want to make sure at all times that you don't have any twists. So we'll take some paracord. The first thing we're going to do, so if you're familiar with whipping, you'll know that you need to basically wrap down into a loop. So we'll create a loop with that paracord again into that channel that's in the webbing. So you want to leave a little loop hanging off there. So I'd say our step is probably going to be about six inches when we're through. So what we're going to do is start wrapping from this point here. And you want to wrap this pretty tight too. It's important to maintain the direction on this too because if you're not careful it'll kind of collapse and then you'll wind up wrapping it at an odd angle as well. So for time's sake I'm just going to do this a little looser than I normally would but what's nice is too that you can hang this as you've got to this point on the carabiner to, to kind of keep things upright as you're wrapping. So again, I'm not tightening as much as I go, just considering the time. Again, if we were tightening this, we would create a little bit of a longer step, but I'm willing to bet even with the, the loose wrapping, and we're almost at six inches. But again, if I would have tightened this up, I think we would have been good right at six inches. So what you'll do with the tail of this, and just so you can see it a little better, we'll stop there. The tail will get passed through that loop, just like so. So let's do it this way. Might hold a little better. And you'll come down here, and you'll pull on that loose string that you have here. So now if this were wrapped tight, what I'd want to do is go ahead and trim this here and make sure this was tight as possible. And I would trim this here and basically just fuse these so that they didn't come unraveled. So if we look right here, we've now got our fixed step to step inside the loop with.
Okay, so something else I wanted to show is as you get your steps completed and pulled in your piece of webbing, and you get all the way down here to the bottom where you're left with this looped end, because remember we tied the frost knot in the top to make a fixed loop, you can actually connect another piece of webbing and just continue on creating as long of a ladder as you can based on the webbing that you have available. So, and you would do that with another frost knot. So this is the other variation of the frost knot which is an overhand loop in the looped end. And then you would grab another piece of webbing, find that midpoint in loop, and you'll just basically do a trace back or a trace through. So you'd insert that at the point where the loop stopped. and continue to pull this through. And you just now clean that up. So there's the other variation of the frost knot that's tied. So this is your original ladder here. Now you've tied on another piece of webbing and you can start to pull the steps for more, more etrier basically. So again, just another quick idea on how you can create an etrier and keep it going. All right guys, so you can see we've got our completed etrier here. This one's got four steps and then the webbing loop at the end like we talked about. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching the ITS Knot of the Week. Be sure to check out itstactical.com to learn more or click the description below to get a direct link to the site.